All right, all right. I kind of missed that one up a little bit, my bad. Um, so we are going into quadratic applications. So let me try to share this this time. I started the video without sharing. So let's go to screen two. Hopefully that's screen two. Well, let's just do it this way. Let's get out of that. Hold on a second. Got to do it the right way. If I don't do it the right way, it doesn't work. All right, let's try now. Ah, there we go. So screen two. I'm going to share. And here we share. All right. So we are sharing. So let's look at this. So quadratic applications. So kind of started this a little bit. So we have area of rectangles, length times width, area of triangles, base times height divided by two or one half base times height. These are ones that you might need, okay? So the uh, area problems tends to be the big quadratic type of application. So these are geometric ones. So let's talk about a geometric problem in which the length of the rectangle exceeds its width by 10 feet. If the area is 375 square feet, find its dimensions. So if my width is unknown, but my length is 10 more the width, then instead of an L, we're going to put W plus 10, which would represent the length. And its area is 375. So we would do the length times the width, okay, which is W plus 10 times W is equal to 375. Distribute, we have w squared plus 10w is equal to 375. So then we're going to, we got to get, every, because I have a w squared and a w, everything has to go to one side. Okay, and then we're going to factor. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find factors of 375 that add up to 10. Okay, so or subtract a 10 in this case. So 375 divided by five, I know works. That's five and 75, okay? So I know another five, so 375 divided by 25 is 15. So there's 25 and 15 would be the ones I want because I need it to be a negative. One's positive, one negative, which means the 15's negative. So it's going to be W minus 15 and W minus, uh, plus 25. That's how it's going to factor. Because when you FOIL that, I'm going to get a positive 10, which means W is going to be 15 or W is going to be negative 25. Well, in applications, answers have to make sense. And these are widths. So in feet. So I'm either going to have 15 feet or we're going to have negative 25 feet. And I can't have a negative feet. So my width is 15, okay, which would make my length 25. So it would be 15 by 25. That would be the dimensions. Okay? So factoring, and a lot of times you'll get a one of them negative. Uh, and sometimes, depending on the problem, you, you have to check to make sure they make sense. All right, so let's look at this next one. This one deals with right triangles. Now, if you remember right triangles, you use this Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, where this one is your hypotenuse, right? Or the longer side. It says the length of the video screen is 21 feet shorter than its height. If the diagonal of the screen is 39 feet, find the height. So picture here's my screen and I have this diagonal we know the diagonal is 39 feet okay if we know that the length is 21 feet shorter than its height that makes the height higher right so the height we're gonna make is H okay and that would make the length the height minus 21 which is a weird length all right, so the video, the length of screen is 21 feet shorter than its width, height. So if that's a height, this is the length. Now, how do we deal with this? 
well, this is going to be a squared, or this is a, this is b, and this is c in Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to have h squared plus h minus 21 squared is equal to 39 squared. And we have to do some math. So this is going to be a squared plus h minus 21 times h minus 21 is equal to 39 squared. And 39 squared is 1521. Got to multiply these. So this is going to be h squared plus h squared minus 21h minus 21h plus 21 times, oops, 21 times 21, which is 441, is equal to 1521, which these two combine, 2h squared minus 42h, and then 441 minus 1521, is negative 1080 and that's equal to zero. Now one thing we want to do because we're going to have to factor this because I moved this over so everything's equal to zero. I'm going to divide everything by two to make it a little simpler. h squared minus 21h minus 540. So I need to find the factors of 540. 2 and 270 right now oh, that's way too far. I got to get 20 right. 10 and 54 I'm getting closer. How about 54 divided by 12? Whoops, 4, or 540 divided by 12 is 12 and 45. It's still 33 away, so we're still going. Uh, 540 divided by 14 doesn't work. 540, whoops, 540, 540 divided by 16. 540 divided by 15. So that's 15 and 36, which is my 21. To get negative 21, the 36 has to be negative. So this is going to be h minus 36, h plus 15, is equal to 0. So h, the height, is either going to be 36 or negative 15. Well, it can't be negative 15. So the height is 36 feet. Okay. All right. Now, for the next section, you might want to stop. Okay. And you can watch the video at the end of section two and 1.5. It's a good little video for the next one. I don't know why they put it where they put it, but it does represent the last type of problem. Well, one of the last ones we are going to deal with in this section is falling body problems. Okay. So it talks about some formulas in which we're going to use our calculator for. So it says, if a water balloon is launched, so this is a different problem. This is out of the textbook. If a water balloon is launched at 144 feet per second and follows the formula, H is equal to 144T minus 16T squared, where T is time and H is height, when is the balloon at zero feet? Okay, so if we want to know where this would be my height, so basically we're going zero is equal to 144t minus 16t squared, which, how do we factor that? Well, this is going to be that GCF factoring because 144 divided by 16 is 9. So I can factor out a negative 16. And I'm going to get, um, well, let's just do it this way. Make it, uh, that might have been a little confusing. We're going to send everything to the other side. So it goes 16t squared minus 144t is equal to 0. We're going to factor out the 16, which will give me t squared minus 9t. OK. Now, let's go ahead and take out a, uh, you know what, I got a better way. That was going to work, but I got a better way. 
16 t squared, this will be actually faster. Let's do this. Let's divide everything by 16, which will give me t squared minus 9t is equal to 0. And then let's factor out. This is just going to be a lot easier for you. Try, sometimes I come across, I'm doing it one way, and I think, wait a minute, there's a better way. My brain was wanting to do something else. So I'm going to take out a t, and that's going to leave me, I'm going to GCF a t out. So that's going to leave me with t minus 9 is equal to 0. And then what you do is we're going to set that equal to 0. And we're going to set this equal to 0. We're going to get two answers. So the answer to this is at 0 seconds and at 9 seconds. Now, how can that be? Well, the balloon is launched, right? So if this is my ground, at 0 seconds, it's on the ground. Okay, as it's launched, at some point, it touches the ground again. So at zero seconds, it takes off, but then it once again lands at nine seconds. That's why you have two answers to that. It's going to hit the ground at some point, as long as you have flat ground. Now, it does ask, when is the balloon going to be at 200 and, or 128 feet? So that would put 128 is equal to 144t minus 16t squared. All right, so this is going to take a little bit more. We're going to send this all to the other side. 16t squared minus 144t plus 128 is equal to 0. And hopefully divide everything by 16 because I already know. All I have to do now is make sure 128 divides by 16. And it does. So we get t squared minus 9t plus 8 is equal to 0 which is an easy factor. That's t minus 1 and t minus 8 because those will add up to 9, negative 9. So t is going to be at 1 second and at 8 seconds. Now we already talked about why you have two answers on the other one. Okay. Okay. What this means is at some point up here at 128 feet, it hits it on the way up. And then it gets that same on the way down. And that's why it hits it twice. Okay. Now, the only time you wouldn't get to is if it happens to be at its highest point. And if it's at its highest point, you only get one answer. All right. Now, and again, on time, if any of these answers is negative, uh, you get a negative answer over here, it wouldn't work because you can't have negative time. All right, so find the dimensions of a rectangle with the area of 180 uh, centimeters squared and a perimeter of 54 centimeters. So we're going to use both of these. Okay, so what we know is I have a rectangle with the area of 180. So I know that length times width is 180, and I know that the perimeter, 54, is equal to 2L plus 2W. Now, what we have to do is the following. We're going to solve for one of these two letters, and it doesn't matter which. So I'm just going to say L would equal 180 over W. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to plug that in for this L. So I'm going to have 54 is equal to 2 times, uh, times 180 over W, that's L plus 2w, okay? So that's going to give me 54 is equal to 360 over w plus 2w. Now, what do we do with this? Well, fraction phobia time. Deal with it. How can I get rid of the fraction? Well, what do I have in the denominator? I have a w. So let's just multiply everything by w, okay? So that's going to give us 54w is equal to 360 plus 2w squared. Well, that's not so bad. Let's get everything to one side. We're going to put 2w squared minus 54w, so it looks right, plus 360. All right. And what we're going to do is divide everything by... 2, 
So that'll give me zero is equal to w squared minus 27w plus 180. And we're going to factor that. Okay. Now remember, I'm trying to find the dimensions. So I'm trying to find w at this point, the width. Okay. So this is going to factor. I'm going to save a little time. The number is at 8, 180 multiply. 2 to add up to uh, 27 is 12 and 15. Negative 12 and negative 15. Which means the W is going to be 12. If I plug it back in, well, 12 times 15 is equal to 180. So my length would be 15. And if you know, a rectangle doesn't matter. So it's 12 by 15 is my dimensions. Okay. There's not a lot of problems on the homework in this part of it. Um, those should get you most of the way through most of those. Use a calculator on this one because the numbers get a little fancy. Okay, so I hope this helps on 1.5. Okay, good luck.